Popular columnist and founder of the cable newspaper, Simon Kolawali, has unveiled his book, Fellow Nigerians, It's All Politics, taking readers to a whole new dimension about politics. In his book, he emphasizes the role of leadership in national development. He also shares his view on the qualities of the present crop of Nigerian politicians, who he describes being interested in politicking and neglecting the importance of good governance. The journalist has identified in his collection of essays that politics and politicking are the major obstacles affecting Nigeria's progress. But joining us now is the author of the book for review, Simon Kolawali. He's also the publisher of the cable newspaper, a public speaker and media entrepreneur. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your book. You said since 2006, it has taken you a long time and you finally <laughs> yeah. did it. Yeah. But let's get to fellow Nigerians, it's all politics, the justification for writing this book. Let's begin from there. Yeah, um, every election year, we renew our hopes. You know, politicians come, make promises, say the right things to make us happy. Um, and we go through this cycle all the time. We renew our hope. Oh, this is the guy that will change Nigeria. If this guy becomes president, there will be no flood again. There will be no asu strike. Uh, nobody will have headache again. There will be uh, no cockroaches. <laughs> no air conditioner on the road. Everything. So we create. We we you know we create these expectations. Mm. And then one month, two months, the president comes in and says, oh, this is even worse than the previous president. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have noticed that trend. So yes. the truth is that uh, I don't believe any president, one president can change Nigeria. I don't believe one person can transform this country. Mm. So I'm saying, well, they will come and tell you a lot of things, but remember, it is politics. Why, though? I'd like to know why you don't believe in that. that. Yeah, there are a lot of things. When you talk about the development of a country, uh, what are the indices we are talking about? You are looking at uh, poverty. Mm -hmm. How many people are in poverty are living in poverty? Uh, you are looking at education. How many people have access to education? How many people have? You are looking at the literacy level, provision of water, mm -hmm. uh, security. Those are the things we see in other countries, and we want to go there. Now, if you look at the way Nigeria is structured, education. When they say ten million children are out of are out of school. That is basic education, primary education, and uh, I think up to JS3. It is not the president. Mm. Primary education is under primary is, is under uh, local governments, but we expect that it is the president that will make children address all of those. Mm. Yeah. Um, what else? Primary primary health care. You know what people go to Lagos State Teaching Hospital for or Luth. Some of these things can be treated at the primary health care level. Mm -hmm. You have diarrhea, you have malaria. But primary health care system is under the local government. Mm. Then we're going to blame the president. If somebody dies of diarrhea or uh, malaria, it's always the president. Since uh, this person became president, two million Nigerians have died of malaria. So we, have, we really don't understand how the system works. works. Mm. And so we keep thinking that it is one man that is... Of course, there is a responsibility for the president. I don't want uh, to... I mean... The, the major economic policies mm. are at the foot of the president and in the hands of the president. Uh, inflation rate, uh, exchange rate, and all those things are things that are managed at the, at the uh, national level. But the change that we want, the drainage in front of your house that has not been cleared, that is breeding mosquitoes, is not the president. Most of the rules in this country are not under the president. Mm. Most of the rules are under councils and under states. But we expect the president. I have uh, an uncle who lives in the Korodu. We discussed some years ago, and he said, until the road in front of my house is tired, I don't believe the president has achieved anything. I say, uncle, the road in front of your house is, it, is, it, is, it, is it castle. <laughs> so that is the point I try to make, that we, we, we put too much expectation on the president, and then we hold the president responsible for everything. Everything. Mm. Well, um, you, you uh, put this book in different... Uh, um, sections. I'm interested in this area where you know, guess we have the unpublished works, the most popular, the politics, um, politicking, leaders and leadership in nation and national democracy and development economics and economy. 
and miscellaneous. Many of them are interlocked. They, are, they overlap. If you yeah. read them, what 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 is economics here? It's also politics here. What is politics yeah. here? It's democracy okay. there, uh, and yeah. all of that. Now there's this thing you 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 wrote about uh, dead bodies. You yeah. know. Um, uh, it, it was very fascinating. Yeah. We don't see them around in Lagos talking about the value, the value, the value of life and yes. uh, property. Yeah. Uh, where we don't even value life and so on. Even though the body, the, body, the bodies are no longer seen. Eh? Yes. That are buried. It doesn't happen. Oh, I have buried it. Uh, buried the, the dead bodies. We don't allow the dead bodies to be to on the streets. On. But we moving around. We are the dead bodies. <laughs> 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 because it shows that we do not. But there's a sense reading this book that you don't trust politicians at all. <laughs> eh? that yeah. they, they even the title, they even, there are two articles there that I say it's, it's all it's all it's politics. Gentlemen, it's all politics. Yeah. 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 And so on. So what is governance inside? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, really uh, there's a question I want to ask our politicians, and that is why I would be happy if many of them read this book. It's for them to ask themselves. Am I sincerely giving the best to this local government? Am I giving the best to this state? Am I giving the best in my ministry? Um, when I talk about the dead bodies, if you really care about the value of human life, the emergency services will work. Lagos is even an outlier. You know, we have emergency services that are set up. There is a, an emergency service center at the toll gate if there are accidents and all that. And I know a lot of people who have, whose, whose lives have been saved through that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could have more of that all over. But if you really care about the human life, if you really care about the quality of life people are living, you will govern better. Mm -hmm. Because you will realize that this money I want to spend uh, traveling to so so place, this thing can sink a thousand boreholes. Mm -hmm and prevent cholera deaths in many societies. I'll give you an example that I started in the book. There was this, there, there's this uh, community in Zamfara State. Mm -hmm. Many, many years ago, every year people were dying of cholera because they were drinking from the stream, they were taking their bath in the stream. They, they were even defecating, defecating in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the river. Yeah. And when the, whenever they wanted to drink, they would now walk backwards to take the yeah, drinking yes, water, yes. forgetting that the river yes. is also coming from yes. Yes. and yes. Ha, one guy was going for Senate. All he did was to sink a borehole. How much was borehole then? 100,000? 200,000. And that was the end of cholera death in that village. I don't know if the poor has packed up now. The story I'm telling is about 10 years ago. But you can imagine what 100,000 naira can do to saving lives. So mm -hmm. if politicians really have value for human life, they will govern better. Well, this one has value. So, <laughs> but this one has value. Yeah, 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 I agree. But <laughs> when I... Talk generally, I'm not saying 100%. Mm. Uh -huh. there, are, there are still outliers. There are still people who go against the grain, who mm. are doing things. I mean, there are still plenty of politicians uh, but, but there are some who would say that the aspects of this question, am I governing right and yeah. all of that, are moral questions. Then the issue of morality does not necessarily come to play when it comes to politics that we play in this country. Yeah, but it should. I mean, people are resigning for sending, using their personal email to send an official document. In the US. Uh, that does not in kill anybody. In the any, UK, actually. In the UK. Yeah. That yeah. does not kill anybody because mm. you use Yahoo instead of uh, .gov.uk. Mm. Mm. So it should, if morality begins to matter. Values. 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 Mm. Again, I have to emphasize, I'm not saying every politician, but the truth is that when you look at the majority, if indeed the majority are doing the right thing, we won't be here discussing some of the issues we keep discussing all the time. Look at somebody, we, we, you just showed us the news of somebody, a, a building that collapsed mm. in Delta State. People, there are government agencies responsible to, to vet all the drawings and monitor the building. Mm. So if the right uh, foundation was done, if the right materials were used, based on government supervision, of course, lives will have been saved. You, you mentioned something earlier that um, I'd like for you to perhaps... Uh, throw more light on the aspect of the fact that people do not understand governance, how it works in this country. Do you think that it was a deliberate attempt on the part of the leadership or politicians to ensure that people do not understand that aspect so that they cannot hold them to account when necessary? Or what really is the missing link? Yeah, I, I get your point. Um, 
How do I explain it? For politicians, it works very well if you can shift the blame elsewhere. Don't hold me responsible. Um, there are a lot of discussions around the powers of the states, the powers of the president, the power of the council chairman, the mm. finance. You know, we are discussing, oh, uh, uh, true federalism, yes. uh, regionalism. <laughs> and, and look at it. There are only three things or four things that are exclusively under the federal government. Monetary policy, uh, military, uh, international security, defense, generally, uh, external uh, affairs, and what else? So, uh, uh, aviation is the exclusive preserve of the federal government. But, but then you, have, you also have the you have to have, have, uh, oil. Oil, where? Yes, the oil, yes. the oil, yeah, <laughs> the oil. Which is, which is actually the real, the real. <laughs> when you hear true federalism, it's just about the oil. oil. Yes. Uh -huh. Before oil boom came, mm. Nigeria was developing very well. Absolutely. Because it was the real sector, agriculture, and industry. Mm. Now, look at Lagos State. I'll continue to use Lagos as I am because this is where I live. As of 1999, internally generated revenue was estimated at about 600 million per mm. month. Within eight years, it grew to eight billion or it's so. About eight billion. About eight billion. No law was changed. Mm. The same constitution. Mm. Mm. So people are running away from their responsibilities mm. and blaming so that they can have so is, why this is not working is because okay, look at telecoms, it's under the federal government. Mm. Southwest states had Odu Atel that could have been competing with MTEL today. No law was changed for them to have Odu Atel. No law was changed for them to participate in telecoms. And I mean, Lagos State invested in Econet, okay. Edo State and Delta State invested Aquibom. Nobody stopped them. No law. Mm. No law stops Aquibom from having an oil company that will compete with Shell. There is no mm. law anywhere in Nigeria. Mm. But we like to just push all the problems to Abuja. Oh, it's Abuja. And it's easier. You know, it's an emotional thing. Well, oh, they are taking our as, money. As, uh... Ella, Ibom is Ibom one Ibom of the... Which is the best in the country. And there is no uh, law that stops, stops them. No, yeah. Nothing has been changed in the constitution yeah. to allow that. Now, let's perhaps delve into some aspects of uh, the book. Um, when I went through the book, um, one part talked about uh, the electioneering handbook for Nigerians, where you said, Verily I say unto thee, when ye see these things, knowest thou that the election season is in full swing in Nigeria, and there shall be chatting and cheating uh, and gnashing of teeth. Please talk to us about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, again, politics. Um, uh, there are some things that must happen. Mm. And I can tell you ahead of February 2023 that there will be people who say they were rigged. People will complain about the server. That they, I mean, people already laying excuses to. Yes, they are going yes, to ahead of time. Yeah. They are attacking the INEC chairman, who I think has done a fantastic job. Uh, in my own opinion, yeah. I think INEC today yeah. is far better than the what we, ever, used to be. Uh, we, yeah. we ever had. Uh, yeah. The man snipped the beavers on us. We're not, we didn't even know. Mm. We just got to the polling unit and they started scanning <laughs> yeah. our finger. Uh, I think, but people are already preparing ground. So there are some things you must see every election. There's something about election in Nigeria, it excites us. In fact, that is when we're at our best. Anytime election is around the corner, mm -hmm. we it's forget a carnival, our sorrows. It's a carnival season. It's a carnival season. So there are some things you must expect. Uh, people going to court, court nullifying this uh, election. Uh, people, uh, uh, like I said now, ahead of 2023, people, the grants already People be accused of moving money. People be accused of <laughs> uh, everything moving will, money. <laughs> every, I mean, uh, recently, uh, Atiku said in... Uh, uh, Kaduna, that oh, vote for me. I'm a mm. Northerner. Yes. Yes. I understand your problem better. And don't yeah. vote. Don't, 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 don't vote don't for a Yoruba. Yoruba, Yoruba man. And the truth is that everybody does it. Only that someone was on video. Mm. It's politics. That's where we play politics here. But it's someone was on video. There are people who are now saying, oh, same fate ticket. They are campaigning for their own candidate. Mm -hmm. But they are pretending to be, to be talking Niger about Niger Niger Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, same fate ticket. We destroyed mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. There was somebody who left APC because of same fate ticket. Mm -hmm. He saw a Christian candidate. He didn't go to the Christian candidate. He went to join the, 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 the Muslim, Muslim candidate. candidate. Yes. <laughs> and see, somebody was talking about it was religion that drove him, him from away APC. from yes. politics. Mm. Exactly. You must get that at election times. Mm. You will have people who have nothing to do, who cannot even win a local government, they will contest. So that later, they will be referring to themselves as 
former Uma, presidential candidate in Nigeria. <laughs> and that will give them access to so many things home and abroad. Oh, mm. former presidential candidate. It's the election season. Mm. Yeah. Please have fun. Enjoy it. Yeah, talking about ethnic uh, group, you, you wrote one very uh, interesting one on uh, Sadiq Daba. Yes. Uh, when Sadiq Daba uh, was sick, I think he's gone now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think uh, Sadiq Daba was sick and he, he tweeted his, uh, his uh, condition. And people from different parts, different faiths were all contributing. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Uh, yeah. That thing, uh, there is something that encourages me about Nigeria. Mm. If you put politics aside. Yes, you have to bring, go, look at the optimistic side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, when you put politics aside, mm. we don't have problem with one another. Let a car catch fire on Todd Milan Beach now. You will see the way Nigeria, you won't believe it's this same country. People will park their cars and be rushing with their fire extinguisher. They are not asking what is your ethnic group, what is your religion. Mm. Look at, look at Afrobeats. You see Igbo, Yoruba musicians collaborating. Mm. You will be speaking Yoruba and rapping Yoruba. Nobody is discussing. It is politics. So when we play soccer, soccer. when we play soccer, I'm, mm. I don't, I don't care who has scored. I'm, mm. I celebrate. When yeah, I was yeah, young, yeah. I was. When I thought I could be a goalkeeper, I, I said I was going to be Emmanuel Okala. I didn't, uh, I didn't say it has to be somebody. But you're not that tall. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, why ordinary Nigerians, we don't have a problem with ourselves. My security guard, his best friend is the man next door. He's from the north. The guy is Yoruba. They are always together. They eat together. But do you mind we... Throw politics into the fray. Oh, it's you people that are the problem with Nigeria. Yes. Oh, it's you people that are parasites. Oh, it's you people that are this. So it's part of the challenge I'm trying to but, but that didn't used to be the case uh, uh, when it comes to politics. If you yeah. look at, I think, Hope 93, yeah. when you saw how it went, that was yeah. not the case. When did we degenerate to using ethnic lines to, mm. op, to address uh, politics? Now, Hope 93, there was a strong opposition to Abiola fielding a Muslim Muslim ticket. There was a strong opposition. Khan even came up with a list of Northern Christians that said he should pick. Uh, well, I, I don't need to go into that. They gave him a list. And at mm. that time, there was a Christian versus Muslim war going on in the country. Mm. In Kaduna, we had the Zangun Kataf. Zangun Kataf. Which was a But it was not as pronounced as it is now. It is. It is. It was it was people, today, people. Boko Haram is fighting everybody. Yeah. They said, we want to lie. They are fighting Christians. They are fighting Muslims. Muslims. That time, it was Muslim versus Christian. Mm. When the General Zamani Lekwot and others were sentenced to death, can't say it was because the Christians had the upper hand. That's mm. why finally, government mm. was taking it. That when Muslims mm. were having the upper hand, that the military government did not do anything. Mm. Mm. Religious trials in Kano, regularly uh, 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 between Christians and Muslims. In Bauchi State, I remember there was a riot in one town because uh, the guy who was selling suya mm. was a Christian. Christian the yeah. one who bought was a Muslim. Mm. And when they bought, his Muslim friend said, ah, don't you know that those people eat pork? Okay. Yeah, are you sure it's not pork he gave you? And then I went back to the case and I said, if you give me pork, God will punish you. And that's how war yeah, broke out. Yeah. So there was serious Muslim versus Christian. But today, when you're talking about Boko Haram, <laughs> I said you want to deceive us. I'm sure more Muslims have been victims, if, mm. you, if you really yeah. count the dead bodies. The bandits that are killing people, Zamfara is 99% Muslim. Mm -hmm. The bandits that are killing them every day. There was a day they stopped the bus, 53 people. They burnt everybody in the bus, every single person on the road. Uh, they on didn't the road. ask whether you are Muslim or Christian. They didn't Christian. ask whether you are Muslim or Christian. Mm. So it is now, well, I understand the narrative that has gone on in recent years, in the, since 2015 when Buhari became president. Because even the headsmen, they are destroying farms in the north. Mm. They are destroying farms in the north. It's something that I know. Mm. It's something I've followed for decades. There's conflict even, even like places in Zamfara, part of Kaduna, there's a yeah. uh, full versus the house of conflict. Are, they are mm. both Muslims. No, they are both Muslims. Mm. <laughs> so these things happen if you go to Borono and uh, the farmers, uh, the herders destroyed a, a farm owned mm. by mm. a full or a Kaduna man. It's not mm. news. Mm. Mm. But let them just move slightly to Plateau. And it's, and so uh, it it's a conflict. religious matter, yes. no longer a conflict between herders and farmers. So it has always been there, even during Abiola time it was there, mm. and people kicked against it. Mm. But at the end of the day, they see, I remember uh, uh, Ujuku left SDP after the, uh, King Gibe was picked as yes. the running mate. He left, mm. he was in anger, he left SDP and went to NRC. Mm. 
Mm. I remember yes. very well. But when you now look at the elections, the running mate to Tofa was an Igbo man. But if you look at the votes that the Igbo people gave to Abiola yes, in Nigeria, it was, it was crazy. Mm. And they, basically, they had no stake in yes. SDP because yes. the president, uh, President Kanye is Yoruba, the vice president Kanye is uh, no, no, no. But they still, so that was the significance of that election that despite the tension, despite the division, mm. people still came. People still came together mm. to, to vote. Mm. And hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to history now. And uh, you can see here that um, if you read this, uh, there's a lot of uh, historical um, background. To, to what you write. What is going on with us these days that we don't really have a sense of history? We always, we always analyze events as though we are, we are a nation without memory. Well, the excuse I've had, the million, oh, they don't teach history in school mm -hmm. again. They don't teach. That's what the excuse, excuse everybody gives. I didn't do history in school. I had the option of choosing government or history. It was the same, uh, I, I took government. But most of what I know about Nigeria is not what they taught me in school. I read. And there was no internet, there was no Wikipedia. That, all they say, you have to be reading books. Mm -hmm. Now, we have, there is no information you want about the history of Nigeria. You go online. Get you, you find online. So if you are not interested in reading history, let's stop blaming. You know, we always have a way of shifting the blame. It's, yeah, the, it's the other yeah. person that. I'm not saying history should be wiped off uh, our curriculum. Uh, history is a very tough subject, and I think we, should, we, we need to learn. Because when you are learning history, you are learning politics, you are learning economics. If, if you, you, don't study, learning you don't study government without history. history the most yeah. valuable tool in, study, in the so study of government, government is history. history. Mm. Because that is where you get your models. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's mm. true. So we just need, it has to be deliberate mm. to learn history. A lot of people don't even know the First Republic from what year to what year. A lot of people don't know the difference between parliamentary system and, and uh, presidential, presidential system. system. A lot of people don't understand what federalism and unitary system is. So we have to educate ourselves if we want to participate in public debate. Because a lot of what is going on, especially on social media, the ignorance is just too much. Too much, mm. too much people too don't much. even understand their own country, much mm -hmm. less how will you understand the world you are living in. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even understand people's faces. It's very interesting you said about true federalism. I remember yeah. there's one article here in which you yeah. said one of the is, Nigeria is the only country where you talk about true, true federalism. Fe true. Well, but when there's, a, there's this play by uh, um, this German playwright. What is his name now? Uh, it's, uh, it's about a woman in war, war torn area where he yeah. said, where People talk about, when people are always talking about holy things or values, you know that it is because they don't have values. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that means that means their values there are rotting. Are rotting. Are rotting. But so when we are talking be... about true federalism, true yeah. federalism, yeah. it is because we don't have it. We are not serious about yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I, again, a lot of myths that we carry mm. around. China mm. runs a unitary system. Yes. <laughs> it's one of the largest economies in the world. Mm. Mm. UK runs a unitary system. But we have created federalism. I'm not saying we should do run federalism. I want us to run federalism in Nigeria because it caters for the diversity, diverse ethnic groups, diverse mm. regions. So there are some things that, I mean, the northern region, they care so much about religion and whatever. So they can play their religion, those who care about. But the unitary system does not develop any country. Neither mm. does federalism develop any country. Uh, United Arab Emirates, is a, is a, they run a federal system. It's different from Mexico. Mexico runs a federal system. In Mexico, all oil revenue belongs to the central government. Mm. All. They don't get, they, like they, now, they now distribute it equally among the states. Mm. Because they, federal, because they trust themselves. It's federalism. Right. Uh, now, South Africa, they don't have state police. Mm. It's federalism. So it's just like jollof rice. Your jollof rice is even for mine. That's not like true jollof rice. <laughs> it depends on your tongue. <laughs> and what you it depends on your tongue. Your My grandmother's jollof rice is the best ever. <laughs> now, you mentioned something earlier, yeah. social media. You know, it has come into the mix in our politics. Yeah. And we see the way, you know, people react and act on mm. social media. Yeah. I wonder how we can make them understand that it's all politics. Because it seems they do not understand that aspect. Yeah, uh, I think social media is a reflection of the quality of our thinking, of those who are on the social media. Um, what I've realized over time is that some people are there, they don't talk. Mm. So if you have 10 million on social media and 100,000 are saying nonsense, 
that's what will be trending. And then you will just conclude that everybody that is thinking that, that way. way. <laughs> yeah. thinking that and because way. they are only listening to themselves, they think they are the majority. Yes. Mm. So if somebody true. tries to say the truth or his own truth and you attack him, he will keep quiet. If he's not a rough, rough guy, if he's not the kind of guy who wants to fight, he will withdraw. Mm. Then many people will withdraw, they will be silent. Then, that will not give you the impression that, oh, we are dominating this arena. And because our voice is dominating this arena, then we are in, we are in the majority. No, it doesn't work like that. So I, I, there are a lot of countries where I learn a lot. You know, when you talk of social media, there are people who teach us history, who teach us economics, politics. Yes. I enjoy those things. But there are those people who, uh, you know, they are street fighters, you know. <laughs> they will take this. ignorance. <laughs> if they anytime I ignorance. say a comment, oh, you are mad, I, can, I look at the logo, I know where this <laughs> comment is coming from. <laughs> I can just guess, oh, yeah. you are mad, you are a madman. Yes. On social media, I know, oh, this yes. can only be this, this kind, kind of person. Of, uh, of person. <laughs> and then I quickly look at the logo and I say, oh, okay. Now I understand. Yeah. And it's become a badge of it's pride. A pattern. It's a pattern. Mm. It's yeah. become a badge of pride that I abuse people on social media. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they, they abuse me. Mm. I just, I've mm. never responded to one. I've been no, on no, no, Twitter since 2012. I've never responded to one. Mm. It That's makes what no point. Means. I've not become shorter or darker. You have said, you said what you want to <laughs> say. <laughs> so let them, let them say what they want to it's say. It's a problem, but I think it's a global problem. But mm. when I read comments on UK, uh, uh, US and all this, I still see a lot of educati educative tweets. If you go to New, New York Times, oh, because yeah. I subscribe to them, yeah. New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, when you read the comments. articles and you read comments, mm. you know that people are thinking. Mm. Some of those, some of some of the comments can even replace the, the article. Can replace the article. <laughs> the article yeah. you, you, you see beautiful depth. thinking and, you, you and, see and tons of phrases mm. that just encapsulate the thoughts. And you say, ah, why are people not doing that? They say, mm. oh, you're stupid. That's why I block my comment. And they all complaining that I blocked my comment. <laughs> there was one time on my on my comment, there were like two or three people. Who took it as a as a as a duty? If I'm not not two or three, quite a, like a set of people, I see they will just write full articles so that <laughs> and then they're all abusing abusing, and then they will so that other people will now come and uh, agree with them. So I said, why why am I giving them platform to do this nonsense? Mm, right. I block them off. Mm. <laughs> so we we the social media. I think at some point. The educated and enlightened and intelligent people will have to assert themselves so that people are not driven away from such an important tool of communication yeah. and engagement. Then you have this place of optimism here. Yeah, I like this article you wrote of optimism. Say five reasons to be optimistic. You mentioned the diaspora, the Nigerian spirit, of course, the Nigerian spirit. Usually, when you go outside Nigeria, yeah. you know that you see that Nigerian spirit. Well, the new generation, I'm not too sure about that. Then there was Obia <laughs> effect. Uh, you know, why well, spread this ghost? Well, 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 you have to be angry to get the things this is right. Well, yeah, which, of, which of them do you think really, really, really tops the chart? The diaspora. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying something that many people may not agree with me. This mm -hmm. jackpot thing people mm -hmm. are living, I'm not against it. Okay. It's unfortunate that maybe we are losing doctors some vital skills. When people go abroad, they see a new world. It's, it's a new form of learning altogether. Experience. Now, in a new experience, they are seeing processes, procedures. They are seeing how human beings behave to each other. Those who are Nigerian doctors who have gone to the UK, they see how doctors talk to patients. Mm -hmm. If you talk rudely to any patient, it's an issue. You yeah. can, you can and nurses them. too. And nurses. The way they treat them like human beings. Nurses will just tell you when you are pregnant. <laughs> And you want to say, yeah, Ludo, don't cry, don't cry. Well, After you, you go, you say you won't <laughs> grab your child. Then next time you go again, <laughs> hey, I'll bring the child here. Yeah. So, the, the, <laughs> way, the way nurses talk to patients, the degrading way, by the time they get there, they realize they can't do that. So mm. if they come back here and they set up, I see people go abroad, come back to Nigeria. That's called, you see the this quality? one is Jack Bada. Yeah, Jack <laughs> <laughs> Two, eh? two, when they go, Somebody steps up. If the head of a department mm. relocates to Canada, it's unwilling for somebody to, to be mm. employed, to be mm. promoted manager, and another mm. person to be employed. So, three, remittances. I can one. assure you that a lot of families in Nigeria depend, they depend on, on remittances. remittances. Yes. This one, they are building house. This one is sick. This one uh, is going to school. So, it's like a, we should see it as an investment. I, if we are giving $5 billion to them, 
to go and school abroad, and they are remitting 30 billion, 40 billion. It's, if you know how many profit. Indians in diaspora, they, I don't have the figure, but I know it's, it's, a, it's major, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So yeah. not, all of is that even, negative thing. not all of it is even, uh, is even, even caught in by our statistics. Yes. Yes. Because some yes. of them come in different yeah. ways. Yes. And you have, yeah. and you <laughs> many, many Nigerians who went abroad and were called back to work in government. Mm. They made a difference. A huge yes. difference. A huge difference. Yes. Because of the knowledge they have acquired, because mm. of the expertise. So I'm not comp I'm not against uh, Japanese. Okay. Okay. Means. All right. Another uh, concerning aspect with regards to the elections is the aspect of fake news, yeah. misinformation, and disinformation. Mm. Uh, let's address that also. Especially as somebody who is uh, also. Uh, an entrepreneur mm. online with mm. uh, cable news. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, fake news, uh, disinformation, misinformation. Now, misinformation is common. It's not deliberate. Uh, you have so and how you show that it was misinformation for you to correct yourself and say, well, mm. "Our error." Mm. I think Guidance has that uh, column. Our error. Mm. New York Times every day. Mm. Clarifications and corrections. Mm. Because you misinformed. Mm. That shows there is no agenda, it's not deliberate. But disinformation is deliberate. Um, uh, fake news, people just sit down. It, it's a part of uh, disinformation. Now, I don't have too much good news. People will continue because it is out of desperation that people are doing those things. People continue. What we just have to do as media houses, as newspapers, uh, broadcast stations, is to continue to fight. To continue to fact check, is to continue to bust these lies. But those who are doing it, they are not going to relent. Mm. But as much as possible, the things people so, so WhatsApp is even the worst. People do people mm. talk yes. about Twitter and mm. Facebook. Mm. WhatsApp is the worst. Mm. Oh, it is personal. Mm. It comes directly to you. And it's not everybody that it, is saying. You don't it. have the public to even to, to prove you wrong. And you have groups. Who are talking to each other, echo talking, chambers. Yes. <laughs> So the media will have a major role to play in, mm. in, 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 in tackling this. We should just make it a duty. I right. was telling you that there was one article you wrote that you didn't put here. Yeah. This was the article about your... <laughs> Gitman. About your Gitman. Yeah. Who, who, who duplicated your key yeah. Yeah. and uh, I was, was, was robbing me. <laughs> was robbing you and then you open your door. <laughs> all your things have become spirits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a... Uh, uh, have when I wrote that, that, it was not all politics. When, <laughs> so it's not all politics. When I wrote that article, some people said, no, uh, that you went too far. You shouldn't have said certain things. But it helped many people. Mm. Right. They became mm. more conscious. 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 Mm. Mm. We have to leave it here now. And that was even before kidnapping started. So yeah. right. know, this guy could have organized for me to be kidnapped. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> at your door, you just open your door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't know that, but that was even... Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have to leave this conversation yeah. here yeah. now. Simon Kolawale and an uh, author, publisher of the cable newspaper, and public speaker, as well as media entrepreneur. Congratulations on your book once again, and thank you for being a part of the show this morning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you.